Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and we are back for an episode of Tech Raid, where I will recap all the major gaming hardware news that's come out in the last month or so. And this week alone actually has been a pretty big deal. We had photos of NVIDIA's GTX 770 leak, AMD confirmed a roadmap to their next iteration of GPUs, Haswell, of course, is rapidly approaching, and uh, on the motherboard front, Gigabyte has a pretty cool new high-res customizable UEFI BIOS for their impending Haswell boards. So, all that in mind, let's start with the graphics news. In recent leaks to Chip Hell, photos of NVIDIA's reference GTX 770 have surfaced along with speculation, of course, on prices and some specification information. Fudzilla has also cited sources on card specs, but has some conflicting information with Chip Hell. So I'll just lay it out straight for you since there's really no way to know who's more accurate between the two leaks and two sources. First of all, both sites and both sources confirm that the 700 series of GeForce GPUs will effectively be rebranded 600 series chips, just stepped up by a tier. So the GTX 770 will more or less represent a GTX 680 of the previous line of, uh, of Kepler, which the 700 series also runs on. The GTX 760 Ti will effectively be a GTX 670, and so on. We'll see the same GK104 GPUs on the 770 and 760 Ti as we saw on their re respective predecessors, though the GTX 780 is significantly more interesting. The 780 looks like a, uh, it looks more like what we'd call a Titan Lite card, so of course everyone knows the GTX Titan by now, and from what Chip Hell sources have stated, it looks like the GTX 780 will utilize the same GK110, or at least a, a slightly stripped down version of the GK110 GPU that's found in the Titan. It'll have 2496 CUDA cores to Titan's 2688, so in terms of raw compute power, they're really not all that far apart at least for our gaming and enthusiast purposes. It's almost definitely less optimized for professional applications, of course, but that's just how optimization works. It will still be targeted toward gaming for the 780. The 780 will ship in both 3GB and 5GB SKUs, GDDR5 from what we've heard, and according again to Chip Hell, both 3GB and 5GB SKUs will have 320-bit and 384-bit memory interfaces, respectively. Fudzilla, on the other hand, says the 780 will be on a 256-bit memory interface based on the uh, Titan LE GK110 chip. Really, that's a pretty massive difference for the memory interface between the two reports, and it is a very significant impact for gaming purposes, actually any purposes, because you need enough bandwidth, which is partially calculated by the interface, width so you can actually push the data to all of that RAM. As for what I can tell you, well, this isn't a new generation of GeForce chips. It's not the Maxwell gen we've been waiting for, and it's effectively a rebrand and slight upgrade of the existing options. I don't want to make it sound bad, because it's not. They will probably perform pretty well, uh, but it's not Maxwell, just FYI. The new units will have revised heat sinks that are similar to the Titan cooler, so that's certainly reason to be excited, and I'd imagine we might have better overclocking potential with the shift of Boost 2.0 down from Titan to the Consumer Class 700 series. If nothing else, Boost 2.0 will be a big boon to the adoption of uh, whatever cards end up carrying them by enthusiast overclockers. When we attended PAX East, our NVIDIA sources somewhat ambiguously noted that Boost 2.0 would be shifting down the chain to new chips. As for whether new chips are uh, clarified as the 700 drop or Maxwell, I'm not certain. That information may be out there, so uh, certainly do comment below if you find it. Generally, another upgrade that happens with these quote-unquote rebrands, as I've been calling it, is a drop in TDP and heat overall, so that's another thing to definitely look out for. And uh, it's not as big a deal as with the Fermi series, but certainly always a good thing to drop heat. We'll still be running on Kepler architecture, and while I'm certain that the GTX 700 series will have fairly noteworthy gains over the GTX 600 equivalently branded cards, anyone who's already on Kepler or Fermi may want to wait it out another generation, or at least wait for some of the more uh, in-depth benchmarks to emerge. The ship dates on the 700 series have been listed as May 23rd for the 780, with a potential May 16th drop, May 30th for the 770, and quote-unquote summer for the 760 Ti. So moving on to AMD's GPU updates, we get a somewhat less exciting but equally noteworthy roadmap, 
And AMD's Sea Islands GPUs were originally due out in quarter two this year, for those who remember. Uh, but due to a series of delays and technological hurdles, we may not see them until quarter three or quarter four, if at all. There's technically already been an 8000 series drop in the form of OEM chips for laptops and other devices, but no official 8000 series uh, Sea Islands cards have yet been put out. The new Richland APU, which is due fairly soon and will champion Trinity, will technically be running 8000 series branded uh, you know, an internal APU, the GPU component of that, but they're mostly just rehashes of the 6000 series found in Trinity as the base. So, in short, there's been no major news on the 8000 front, and due to delays and branding and marketing reasons, I almost wonder if we'll even ever see one, though uh, if we do see an 8000 drop in consumer GPUs, it won't be until much later this year. What we do know, however, is that AMD has now confirmed some of the specs of their HD 9970 chip in the Volcanic Island series of GPUs. Volcanic Islands originally due out after Sea Islands. And the 9970 has been stated to operate on 20 nanometer gate last manufacturing process, which is actually ahead of schedule, so that should probably happen. And it aims to take place of Tahiti. The 9970 boasts 4096 stream processors, 256 TMUs, 64 ROPs, and a massive 512 bit memory interface, according to our sources. With that large of an interface, I wouldn't be surprised to see an unprecedented memory capacity to take advantage of the increased memory bandwidth and bus. And given AMD's 8GB unified memory presence on the PS4, I don't think it's too ridiculous to suspect that they may take a similarly high capacity approach to discrete GPUs in the desktop market. Transitioning from GPUs into CPUs feels a lot more natural in the modern era of IGPs and APUs than really it ever has before. And Intel's Haswell chips have had a series of final confirmations lately, including ship dates, specs, pricing, and IGP info. It's too complex to delve into great depth here, but we can definitely go over some of the basics and need-to-know info. As for the graphics component, which Intel pushes really heavily lately, Intel's released internal benchmarks, so these haven't been checked by third parties, mind you, of uh, benchmarks of Haswell's Iris integrated graphics. The results were compiled only with Intel's 3rd gen Ivy Bridge HD 4000 IGP on the desktop side versus its 4th gen Iris IGP on 3D Mark 11, but they're still pretty promising. From the charts we've seen, it looks like Intel's desktop class i7 4770K outperforms the current gen i7 3770K strictly in graphics output by nearly 300%. So three times uh, faster, however they define faster. I, I think it's actually defined by the score granted by 3D Mark 11, and they uh, they normalize that score to just an easy 3x. Despite the TDP increase to 84 watts in the 4770K from I think it was 77 watts previously, that's a pretty insane amount of graphics power to pack into a socketed CPU, which traditionally has only been the CPU up until the last couple of years here. Is it something that I want to game on? Not really. If I'm honest, most enthusiast gamers will still want a discrete card, and Intel knows that. They're not trying to compete with... Uh, you know, high-end NVIDIA chips or AMD cards. That stated, it would be closed-minded to scoff at the uh, incredible developments made by, really, AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, everyone in recent years to bring low TDP, high-performance graphics to traditional CPUs. That's It's pretty impressive, really, when you look at uh, the history of these CPUs. And looking at mobile units, which is where integrated graphics make a whole lot more sense, it actually looks like Intel's i7-4650U CPU outperforms the previous 3687U by approximately 1.5 times uh, the previous metrics. The i7-4558U is a full two and a quarter times the score of the third generation 3687U. So... The mid-range 4650U Haswell chip uses only 1.5, or sorry, <laughs> uses only 15 watts. 1.5 would be pretty outrageous. It uses 15 watts, so to produce effectively the same performance as a GT 620M, at, which consumes around 35 watts, that's that's pretty impressive. I'm I'm excited about the future of where this is going. Keeping thermals and power consumption down in the in the laptop means more efficient cooling design, longer battery life, really just uh, more consolidated in terms of the actual laptop size, 
and it yields the same or better performance than the previous generations. So definitely good news there for laptops if you are using Intel in them. As for when it's coming out, we know Haswell's targeted release date is June 3rd, which is dead center of Computex, I think, or right before it. And this was confirmed directly by Intel's Twitter feed, which stated the 4th gen release date in nanoseconds from the tweet. Pricing will be pretty similar to what we saw at the launch of the 3rd generation of CPUs. Don't expect prices to fluctuate very much in the Ivy Bridge market. Intel's processors really always stay around the same price point for their entire shelf life, aside from occasional fire sales from retailers. Transitioning over to motherboards for the last part of our news for the month, we see Gigabyte really getting behind UEFI BIOS customization, and uh, I actually I recently wrote a roundup article on the major Z87 boards coming out for Haswell, but at the time we hadn't yet heard anything about BIOS specifically. Gigabyte has streamlined their new BIOS a bit by stripping out some of the tediously low-down status menus, so uh, they have instead repositioned them to be more consistently located on the sides and top and bottom of the screen, which allows the user to monitor CPU, memory, and system information constantly without the need to dive through multiple sub-menus. In the screenshot released by Gigabyte, we also see what looks to be a user-customizable tab configurator, from the image, users will be able to create their own tab, name it, assign a location in the menu hierarchy, and then assign items that will be displayed on that tab. Probably most noteworthy, however, is the fact that it's a high-res interface, likely 1080p or thereabouts, and the resolution is configurable from within BIOS. It also appears that uh, voltage regulation, clock speed, stuff like that can be manipulated with slider options, which is kind of neat if a bit unnecessary. And that's all for this month's Hardware Roundup. If you spotted any important news that I've left out of here, please post it in a comment below, let everyone know, and I will see you all next time. Peace.